God uses broken things. He breaks them, he sees they're broken, he brings them back together. But what was Peter's part in all this? Because I know you're asking, yeah, but you know, I've got to, I really need to be restored to my spouse. And I really need to be restored and forgiven by my kids or my parents. What's my part here? What did Peter do? What did he do? Three things. He humbled himself. Secondly, he was grateful. He was thankful for that, for, for Christ. And thirdly, he followed Christ. He trusted him. How do we get restored back with another individual? We have to humble ourselves. We, we have to uh, be grateful. And we have to be restored to them by trusting in them again. Without that, restoration is not possible, but that's what Peter did. Doesn't that remind you of salvation? I humbled myself, and you humbled yourself at the foot of the cross. God, there's nothing I can do to save myself. I'm just so grateful that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. I trust you as my personal Savior and Lord. Same way we get saved, the same way we get restored every day, if we have to, from our failures in life. You say, but was Peter completely restored? I mean, you think to yourself, well, didn't he feel guilty about that? Yeah, I think he did. We're just human. And you do something in your life and you think, well, I know God's forgiven me, but, well, you know, I wish I had a second chance. After all, I, Peter thinks to himself, you know, if I had told that young lady that I was a follower of Jesus, I would have been a fourth, uh, then four crosses up there, not three. And I was not willing to die for Jesus. Notice what it says here. In verse 18, truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus said, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. What's it talking about here? It's talking about a little child. He said, your arm were stretched out toward your parents as they were embracing you. But he says, now when you're old, when you get old, you will stretch out your hands once again, and someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Wow, that's a mystery. Verse 19 explains it. Now this, he said, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. What's he saying here? He said, one day, Peter, you're going to have a second chance to die for me. And I'm sure that gave him comfort all of his life. I'm going to, I'm going to get a second chance. And I know it's not a second chance that you and I would necessarily relish, but put yourself in Peter's spot. spot. I mean, here he was, the leader of the disciples. He had let Jesus down. And Jesus said, I'm going to give you another chance. He said, I'm going to make a prediction this time. Just trust me. You will not falter this time. And we know from history that Peter was crucified. He stretched out his hands and his arms. And he was nailed to a cross like his Savior. And he died there. The God of the second chance. That's what the gospel is all about. Max Lucado said it best. This is a great quote. It's not every day that you find someone who will give you a second chance, much less someone who will give you a second chance every day. But in Jesus, Peter found both. A second chance every day. And if you've never received Christ into your heart, that's the beginning step for you. That is the gospel. 